In this video, I will walk through the whole process of building the FA-18C Hornet cockpit. This is part one of three part video. This is started around two years ago when I built my first DCS VR cockpit. At the time I built the cockpit with a design that allowed the cockpit to be used in multiple aircraft in DCS. As you can see, there's a lot of buttons, switches, handles, which represent at least four aircraft. F-A-18C Hornet, F-A-8B Harrier, Mirage, and A-10 uh, Thunderbolt in a small portion of the switches. Despite its versatile in design, the main drawback are, this is my first cockpit, which is not reliable as sometimes the switches are malfunctions, the build is rough, and don't have a fine finishing. The f variety of switches cause some difficulties in finding certain switches or buttons during the simulations. From there, I dream a true cockpit replica, and I choose FA-18C as it is the most versatile aircraft in this year, in my opinion, because it can take off and landing in carrier where other can and one of the most developed module compared with others that's, that's before F-16 is coming out but still it doesn't change my mind because of the versatility of the F-A-18C Hornet so my dream are really to, to build realistic cockpit with almost one-on-one -on -one replica a full clickable cockpit button switches handles you know almost everything are in place and function a hundred percent kind of mapping to DCS however I do not need any active display like in DDI or moving map in the real physical cockpit because I intended to use it in VR only Though probably sometimes in the future if I want to mod it, yeah, it's still open. I was thinking also it should be modular. If I want to change several, uh, the panel itself, for example, for other aircraft, if I manage to create another one, it could be done. So the action plan is really uh, to design and construct the cockpit frame body first. I was thinking also to produce uh, a buttons, knobs, and special design handle. And next will be to create the panel itself, starting from the left, um, right panel, and then finally the front panel. Once it's complete, uh, all the physical features, including accessories later on, uh, to make it real looks real then i have to dismantle again uh, open up the panels again and then start the electronic systems installations and then uh, once it's done i would put back into the the cockpit frame uh, the panels and finalizing the whole build starting from cockpit frame and body um, this is the first steps that i took as part of my strategy but probably I realized later on that it might not be a good strategy because it will be quite difficult to change the frame right so this is the the, the bulk of the constructions the first thing that I did is get in a measurement uh, I've got a lot of information from various sites including DCS forum hornetspeak.org uh, you know there's a lot of comprehensive photos pictures and other drawings that can be used as a base for measurements from there i designed the 3d model using google sketchup and then i break apart or trying to measure each of the components that will construct the the, the frame uh, for the construction i'm using metal works so i'm using metal tubes like uh, square metal tubes l-shaped metal uh, metal plate or metal rod uh, and then uh, plywood uh, the materials the, of course is joined using a stick welding technique um, some screw and finally painting for the whole build uh, starting with uh, creating a base the, the base frame 
for the whole structures uh, they'll this will be the lower end of the structures um, during the whole build this is one of the most intensive or tiring work because it's you required heavy lifting uh, a lot of uh, very dangerous work like cutting metals um, heat from the intense heat from the welding itself and wearing the suit also is, is quite hot in uh, my humid country and um, even I get sunburn actually around my neck um, because of the intense UV light from the stick welding um, so for those who have sensitive skins or you know and not only for that actually for safety reason you have uh, better have a full protections including the working suit itself it is made uh, from um, non flammable materials um, so it protect your your body and skin from uh, flying up over the breeze uh, for when you do cutting for example cutting metals and then of course the thick leather gl gloves uh, it will protect you from intense heat on the metal and it's required sometimes you touch very close to the to the point where you do a stick welding and of course the primary protection for your eyes especially from blinding lights out of the stick welding you know this is you literally can get blind if you see that it's it's really hurting your eyes if you don't use uh, a protective uh, uh, mask this mask is actually uh, auto darkening so i don't need to open up the mask and close it again because it will auto darken the screen when uh, the stick welding in pro in process for me it's a weekend uh, work uh, kind of uh, activity so i need to spend around two weekends uh, saturday sunday here's the completed frame and continued with uh, attaching the plywood with the smooth finish on one side uh, then applying some putty to smoothen the surface sanding it to smooth uh, and then uh, finally painting it mostly with light gray and then cover it with matte clear finish in some area i'm applying gray color a bit of darker tone compared with light gray to give some color shading to make a, a more lively color to the outside panels uh, next on the build actually uh, uh, preparing the knobs and designing uh, special design switches buttons and other small fixtures by design i think aircraft have a very unique caps and knobs to make identification of the switches easier especially when you pilot the aircraft you you can or you don't need to look or f to find the, the right switches there's a lot of switches there uh, and each switch and button uh, have a unique and distinguishable caps or knobs, uh, you know, form. So you you can feel it. This is the right switches that you are trying to interact with. So I've collected several switches and adding more switches, buttons, ready-made knobs and caps from toggle switches with single or dual throw and single dual pole, rotary switches with various size and poles, push buttons with various forms and sizes, push pull switches, rotary encoder switches, single dual inline, rotary encoder switches with push pull switch, and many more. And one of the most important one actually is to create on 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 switch for three position toggle switch, which frequently seen in the aircraft cockpit. The problem is this switch is not easily available in the market. You cannot buy of the shelf even if any it will cost you a very expensive one if you try to find in ebay usually directly from the original kind of aircraft uh, switches uh, luckily there's a lot of reference in eagle dynamic forum um, where they provide a quick information on how to mod this switch um, so i'm using um, dual pole dual throw switches like on off on switches open up the switch and modify the plate inside the switch to be configured rather than uh, parallel like this um, it will become like a, like if you are in a normal position this the, the plate will make a contact like this 
so it's not parallel but when you draw it into one of the side it will be become like this or become like that so it gives you three position on 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 uh, depending on the toggles positions however you really need a good switches on doing this it, this is my experience if you are using a poor switches it won't work it, it will just sometimes work sometimes not you know it you it will frustrate you but if you're using a good switches uh not really supposed to be expensive but you have to find one that really reliable so once you bend the plate inside this switches it will work almost 100 percent every time so that is my experience so how do i do, did the, the process basically you measure the switches buttons the hand especially the this rod there's a toggle rod or toggle handle of the toggle switches you have to measure and and then you have to make a hole in for this cap to fit into that switches so i'm using again the google sketchup to design it and to measure uh, and sometimes i test the forms the size of it because i'm building from scratch i don't know it's it is is it is it the size is correct or too big too large or too small so i'm using a fdm printer or filament ordinary printers um, like prusa i3 mk3 or t4 tornado to 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 test print the the, the knobs or the the caps first and then once uh, i found it's not suitable i will adjust it and remeasure again refine the design in uh, google sketchup and finally once it's uh, right on I will export again to STL files and slicing it in a different software to print using a, DL, a DLP which is digital light processing or resin printer so for the first one I was trying to tackle the the most difficult switches or handle in the aircraft either starting from of course the landing gear this is the one of the interesting one because i would like to see it in red clear and can be lighted with led inside so and they have a concentric circle in the in the knob itself uh, out the, in the outer perimeter of the of the circle so designing this um, landing gear handle first and next i was designing a wing fold and hook handle and handbrake uh, uh, handle you know to knobs so basically those four is this unique handles inside the aircraft that i need to build and then uh the next one is really creating a lot of toggle switch cover so this is the unique features of the aircraft uh switches because they have at least three major form if you can see here uh you have the pointy one pointy cap a round cap and then a flat round cap and of course various uh, unique switches like uh, this one is for flaps and then gear light uh, switches uh, switch knobs and then uh, I think this one yeah cat catapult hook lowering switch so this is mostly the one of the uh, cap cover that I have to print with different hole inside the switches to match with the toggle switches that I'm going to use the next one that is also a lot is actually uh, turn knobs. Knobs is, you know, plenty of knobs inside the aircraft. So for example, this one is uh, DDI knobs uh, that I have to create it. Uh, also actually DDI knob for uh, on off uh, knobs in the DDI. And then uh, this is radio frequency uh, selection knobs. And mostly this area is for HUD. Uh, knobs, uh, HUD panel knobs. Um, this one is from oxy for oxygen knobs, uh, rudder trimming knobs. Uh, with its but push button here, it will be in this in the centers. This is I take from thingy first. This one I think is for uh, KY fifty eight panels mostly. Um, and then and next to it is uh, for jettison buttons. Here is the jettison buttons. Uh, rotary encoder buttons i have to uh, so it's a rotating selection knobs and the button inside it so this and the inside it 
um, uh, this one is for uh, altimeter adjustment knobs and this one is mostly for radar for internal navigation system uh, knobs uh, so this one is for uh, position and navigation light on the left panels and this one is for uh, air bleed valve uh, knobs uh, this one is for uh, ru uh, cockpit and suit temperatures uh, knobs uh, it's a dual stack uh, rotary encoder sw um, switch uh, and then uh, these two are mostly used in uh, lighting intensity uh, knobs on the right panels oh yeah there's another ones like um, there's a volume knobs like this one is for volume knobs uh, on the left panels uh, this also uh, I have to print this one a lot because it's DDI and moving map at least uh, 25 switches uh, buttons right so you have to print what 25 times 3 times pair so kind of a lot like 100 uh, buttons you have to create so this one uh, is designed for DDI so you can see here uh, this one is for DDI uh, push buttons this one for uh, uh, moving map um, so it has a different recess this one is circle this one is square um, this one is for the UFC uh, so they have numbers uh, numeric keypad and you know autopilot selections iff uh, tech and uh, you can you you have to push this button so it's a bigger one uh, this one is actually used in moving map display a uh, rocker switch but i have to create from a uh, similar micro switch this micro switch is smaller compared to the switches that i use in uh, the vr cockpit mark one so last time i used a 12 times 12 millimeter switches uh, but this one is six times six kind of millimeter switches so it's a but it has a very good uh, tactile feeling a clicking sound uh, so it's very uh, the, the bigger one is actually that not that good uh, it's not as good as keyboard key of course but it is good enough and it's actually very small so you can fit in in a very thin uh, bezel of the central center uh, moving map display so they have a uh, that display have a very thin bezel so you cannot fit in a kind of a larger size switches without changing the whole form of the true sizing of the of the display itself uh, next one is wing fold handle it's not as accurate as the real form but it's close enough so I'm very happy with the design so Yes, it will be attached into a push pull toggle switch and it will have a rotating uh, sw encoder switch to sense the rotation of this handle later on. So this one is the rotating um, mechanism. This one is for handbrake. So you can see in the right there's a handbrake uh, knobs now the the rotating mechanisms this is the push pull switch that i created the modeling in in 3d and this knob will attach to this way and then you can push and pull uh, but this push pull switch will rotate if you if you rotate the handle and then the gear will actually connect to uh, it, this is a reduction gear uh, so uh, small rotating here will increase uh, significantly the rotation of the uh, uh, encoder switch here uh, unfortunately this first version is not working well because when you rotate this the gear is actually feeling very rough and sometimes stuck into certain positions so in the final version I have to dismantle this uh, rotating gear uh, I keep the, the bigger gear because I, it's there uh, part of the switch uh, housing the push pull switch housing but the ro uh, rotary encoder i have to put it attach it to back of this uh, push pull switch and using a certain uh, kind of bracket here so when i rotate it will rotate the encoder directly not using the reduction gear mechanism 
and then the next one which is quite difficult is the hook handle this is the second version the first version i used a 3d printed housing from a very small toggle switch it it fail because it doesn't give you a tactile a good tactile feeling of uh, a good ruggedness of the the hook itself it, you know it's just it's very flimsy so i have to redesign again this is using uh, acrylic materials which i use other software a coral draw to to design this and um print uh, cut it in a laser cutters uh, several layer uh, this is i think three millimeter two millimeters two piece and then five millimeters as a body and this one is printed resin uh, 3d models for this uh, mechanisms inside and i have to put a cabinet door catch uh, like it's a catch uh, where you click uh, the cabinet door right it was a very good one actually and it will give uh, it gives you a, a very firm uh, tactile feedback when you click the hook into one of the positions up or down and the hook itself the 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 end of the hook is printed in resin also and these two are connected with uh, round metal tube a very thin one but it's very strong so you really have a ruggedness this uh, feeling of the new design so i like this one in the back of this uh, design there's a micro switch on each of the positions so when you throw this up it will hit the lower micro switch and if you throw it down it will hit the upper micro switch in the back of this housing and the next uh, for the the design that i've completed in 3d and exported to sdl i will send it in and open it in g2 box slicers this is a slicer for uh you know, which use i usually use to generate g-code or uh, to print in a resin printer or dlp printer i have to create this if you see there's a base uh plate here, uh, design here to attach the the knobs or the, the the caps that i'm gonna print into the base so this is the base plate size because uh, it will be printed upside down so yeah so you have to have a strong uh, attachment to the base so this is the printer that i'm using i'm using uh, any cubic photon s you, you can you can use any any other printer but this one is quite affordable um the the idea of the printing is really like it will go down press the resin liquid here that i have to pour there's a, a clear membrane uh, in the base of this uh, you have a membrane a clear membrane down here um, where you pour uh, the, uh, the resin here and it will be pressed by this base plate down um, and then light uh, the uv light will be lighted into the resins also there in between of the membrane and the uv light there is a lcd screen so lcd screen will create a mass so the one that shine through the lcd screen will hit the resins inside itself and then it will getting hardened so it will do every layer every layer i use a 0.1 millimeter or 100 microns so it's quite details compared to like um fdm printer actually i forgot i, I think i use 0 0.05 or 5, 50 microns in my printing okay so this is the result of it so it's very uh very beautiful finish very detailed uh, no artifact like in the fdm you will see a layer here you cannot see even the layers you so you don't have to finish it with putty or sanding it it's just you can just directly paint it um, so yeah this is the true uh, this is the two uh, landing gear knobs left and right and then um, uh, this is the handbrake so once uh, printed uh, and then I glue it up and and then I paint it so this one using Tamiya this is for plastic modeling paint so I'm using Tamiya acrylic red clear and tamiya yellow acrylic paints and this one i'm using an alcat black base paint i, I because i'm gonna print this with a chrome metallic uh, paint from alcat 
Alcat is very, very, very good paint. So, but for metallic chrome finish, uh, you have to do a black gloss finish, and they provide a very, very glossy black paint. However, it takes three days at least to cure in my humid uh, condition. So, yeah, you cannot even touch it during that time because if you touch it, you will leave a mark on it. So, you have to leave it around three days in a very uh, non dusty area because dust will attach to it. Uh, so, you have to put it inside a cabinet or something and leave it there. Once scrum finish is applied by uh, I'm using airbrush. So once you're done with it, you have uh, I have to cover it with another clear acrylic because uh, the the chrome itself will wear wear out over time when you touch it. So just to ensure the chrome is stay there. The better option, of course, using electrolysis uh, chrome uh, plating. So that is another technique, which is yeah, it's, I haven't really tested or never done it before. And this one is example of the printed knobs um, for the sorry the cap button caps for micro switch in DDI and uh, moving map. So this one is for UFC. So this one have once it's printed in uh, DLP printers, I paint it gray, light gray, and then black, flat black, and uh, I'm I'm putting it into the engrave laser engraving uh, machine. Of course, with a jig or template to ensure that this this is actually engraved lines. So it will engra it is engraved by laser. So it it it, it is a rest recessed lines here. And the purpose of this is really to put a white paint, uh, you know, uh, to stick with it. So rather than just paint it or oh, you see this one is still messy. This one has been cleaned with alcohol and cotton buds, and once it's clean it's really uh, look crisp on the lettering so very prominent uh, this one is an example of the the applied uh, white acrylic paints and once i've cleaned it up i'm satisfied with it i i put another clear coat usually a clear um, a shiny clear coat glossy one on top of the switches to secure the white acrylic paint inside this engraved lines so that is the end of step one and two. Uh, I will see you in the second part of the build, uh, second part video of the build, and we will discuss uh, the step three of the build, actually the part two of the video, but the step three of the build. The link is down below, so hopefully you enjoy this video or make something useful out of the, this video.